Hello my dear students. Our topic for presentations today is anatomy of, of breast. Anatomy of breast many a times evokes a nostalgia because most often it is the first discussed topic when we come into our first year of MBBS. So what they primarily do is they convert our beautiful breast, the flag of motherhood into the lifeless boring mammary glands anyway we are not going to the anatomy of the anatomist anatomy but we will more discuss more of a surgical anatomy which will which forms the base which forms the base for further discussion in this topic of breast now coming to the where does the breast lies actually it lies over the pectoralis major muscle that is it lies in between the dermis of the skin and the pectoralis major muscle pectoralis fascia pectoralis pectoral fascia and in between the breast and the pectoral fascia there is a space called the retromammary space where there is some amount of lymphatics and small blood vessels so in this picture we can see this is the position of the breast where it lies between the second to sixth intercostal space this is the breast here when we uh, approach a breast or when we look clinically a breast we should see the nipple areolar complex the shape of the breast and the position of the breast and symmetry of the breast initially <coughs> but when a surgeon sees a breast, he will not only see the breast basically on the external anatomy, but we will he will also he or she will also have a view into the internal anatomy of the breast. This is the a blood cross blood cross section of the breast showing the lactiferous ducts. We can see the lactiferous ducts uh, coming out into the nipple areolar complex nipple nipple. We can see the pectoralis mus major muscle and the lobules here. When we come closer, when we come closer for a clarity view, uh, to a clarity view, we can see that we can see the Cooper's ligament here. Cooper's ligaments are the extension of the breast, extension of the pectoralis fascia. It att attaches to the dermis from the pectoralis fascia. What Cooper's ligament does? is that it gives the baseline shape or the baseline architecture of the breast. The fat lobules of the breast are interspersed in the Cooper's ligament. We can also see lobules and the lactiferous ducts from the lobules, 10 to 15 lactiferous ducts finally draining into the nipple. You can see the pectoralis major muscle and the ribs here, also here. Coming more closer to the breast part of it, we can see that at the end of the lactiferous ducts, before it is opening into the nipple, there is lactiferous sinus. What is the importance of lactiferous sinus in a practical view is the breast milk, otherwise the breast milk will be always draining like that. The lactiferous sinus acts like a small reservoir of the milk. The baby will suck. Once the baby sucks, the, blood, the milk from the lactiferous sinus enters the baby's mouth and the lactiferous sinus fills again. Now coming to coming into a closer view of this lactiferous of this lobule, we can see the lobules is, is filled with acine. This is the when we come much more closer, we will see that this small lobule and the ductule forms the terminal duct lobular unit this terminal it is like you can see it is like a bunch of grapes Our each grape and the stem forms the terminal duct lobular unit which is the which is the basic functional unit of breast so from the gross anatomy of breast we come closer and then we will see the uh, different lobules of the breast again we come closer 
we finally we finally see the terminal duct globular units from the fat of the breast we see the fat lobules when we come closer we will see that the fat lobules are interspersed with interspersed in the cooper's ligament now next thing which is common which is which is which comes along with this whenever we have to learn about breast we, we have to learn about the lymphatic drainage of breast, breast which is very important as far as the surgery is concerned because lymph node involvement is one of the main prognostic factors in case of a carcinoma of breast so first we will learn about the anatomy's viewpoint about the lymph nodes of the breast here we have the humeral or the lateral group of lymph nodes we have the uh, spectral group of lymph nodes or the anterior group of lymph nodes we have the subscapular or the posterior group of lymph nodes and the central group of lymph nodes and all these lymph nodes drains into the apical lymph nodes and finally from the apical lymph nodes to supraclavicular lymph nodes that is the rough drainage of the lymph nodes all this the uh, initial drainage starts by the subareolar plexus of sapi we get here from subareolar plexus of sapi to the axillary lymph nodes then to the supraclavicular lymph nodes we have also the internal mammary lymph nodes here maybe in 5% uh, of the people the internal mammary lymph node may be the dominant lymph node drainage of the breast around 75% of the lymphatic drainage of the breast goes to the axillary lymph nodes in general so but when the when it comes to a surgeon the axillary lymph nodes generally lies along the axillary vein and its tributaries but when it is comes to a surgeon the names does not matter the surgeon thinks more more commonly in the form of levels we have the when we take off the pectoralis major muscle we see the pectoralis minor muscle and the axillary vein or beneath the pectoralis major muscle we see this view as far as the surgeon's point of view of lymph nodes is before entering the before uh, before entering the pectoralis minor muscle here we have the level 1 lymph node underneath the pectoralis minor we have the level 2 lymph nodes and above the pectoralis minor we have the here we have the level 3 lymph nodes so the level 1 lymph nodes level 2 lymph nodes and level 3 lymph nodes these are the surgeon's view point of a of lymph nodes now next we have the nerves in relation to the breast there are a lot of nerves medial pectoral lateral pectoral nerves etc but mainly our concern mainly our concern is regarding the long thoracic nerve if the long thoracic nerve is uh, seen along the medial side of the chest wall uh, along the lateral side of the chest wall once we injure the long thoracic nerve we will have the patient will have winging of scapula another important nerve which we encounter is the thoracodorsal nerve or the thoracodorsal bundle the nerve and the vessel comes together thoracodorsal nerve injury can cause difficulty in moving the shoulder if the intercostal brachial nerve is injured many a times we sacrifice the intercostal brachial nerve for better dissection if the intercostal brachial nerve is involved there will be a numbness over the medial aspect of the arm numbness and tingling sensation of the over the medial aspect of the arm so that is regarding the nerves in relation to the breast and one thing i just forgot to say in the lymph nodes is there are interpectoral nodes which are called rotors nodes there are also called interpectoral nodes or rotors nodes which are also important while dissection of the axillary while axillary dissection of the lymph nodes in, the, in case of cf so at least this much anatomy you should know before approaching a patient of a case of a breast or before doing any procedures in breast or doing or while assisting a case this is a base minimum anatomy we should know regarding the breast cancer breast this anatomy will form the basis for further learning regarding the pathology and other diseases of the breast so thank you for your patient listening thank you